Good morning and welcome to Capital Life Church. We're so thankful for you and we pray that today will be a blessing and an encouragement to you. A quick update for you. The worship night that was going to be tonight is rescheduled for Saturday, November 7th at 5 o'clock. So you can mark your schedules for that. Unfortunately, there was supposed to be a high chance of rain tonight. So we went ahead and postponed it. It's supposed to be in the 60s that day and low chance of rain. So you can mark your calendars for that. We'll have incredible worship from Pastor Jeff and the team, as well as a timely word from Pastor Bill. You'll still be able to sign up for small groups and good news. Mama's Donuts is still available, so we're going to have homemade donuts, hot apple cider, and really be able to worship together as a family. Uh, you can RSVP for that at capitallife.org slash worship night. We hope to see you there. Bring 
your addictions Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting God so loved the world The weapon may be formed but it won't prosper when the darkness falls, it won't breathe in. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. My God will never fail. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, yeah. I think there's power. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down from any giants. Yeah. I know how this story ends. Come on, do you believe it?
that I'd like to share with you. First of all, thank you to those of you who were able to fill out the survey. We're just asking 10 questions. They're multiple choice. They are not difficult to answer. And we're just curious as to what your comfort level is coming back into church, into the building. And we are praying and asking for God's wisdom, but we also want your input because you are our family and we care about you. We're continuing to pray for your good health and in all ways, body, mind, and spirit. So if you can go to capitallife.org slash survey and fill that out, it'll literally take you two minutes and send that in. That will really help us as we are seeking the Lord and praying about this decision about when the right time is to open back up fully. And we're excited about that. Also, we have had quite a few things happen in the last two weeks. And those are engagements and marriages. And we want to celebrate with those who are celebrating. And so we celebrate with Matt and Jean, who have both been serving on the outreach team. And they have just been engaged. So congratulations to you. We're so excited for you. And then also there have been two marriages. Luke and Ashley were married in Montana, which was beautiful. I've seen the pictures. And congratulations to you. And we already miss you. And pray the Lord's blessing upon you. And Casey Harper and Becca Fish were just married. Congratulations to you. And I know that uh, Casey has served in many ways at the church, but especially he has helped out with our guest services teams. And so we're so thankful for all of you. We pray the Lord's blessing upon you and that he will give you peace. Hey Capital Life, by now we've all become much more comfortable with the medium of video. If you've been following along with us regularly at home, you know that this pandemic has taken us to various locations, from our homes to just about every room in this church building, and now even into other church facilities. It's been a challenge, but it's also been a catalyst to increase creativity and the implementation of new methods to share the gospel in these uncertain times. That's why this year for our Make Our House Our Home campaign, we've decided to strategically invest giving towards production. Specifically, two new cameras and lenses, accessories and communication equipment for our amazing team of volunteers, so that they continue to do what they've been doing, but with greater excellence. A quick scroll on our YouTube channel will show you just how far we've come as a church. And as we prepare for this next season, we want to move beyond borrowing equipment and instead invest into quality gear of our own. We're all praying that this pandemic ends soon and that we can come together more and more regularly. The good news is that when this does happen, we're taking these steps to also ensure the quality of our online presence remains intact. 
for those that may still need to worship from home a little longer, or for those of us who like to watch Capital Life content online. So here's where you come in. I want to extend to you an opportunity to invest into this phase of upgrades. As you know, we are all the church, and without you, none of this happens. Thanks to our frugal production manager, we were able to keep the budget of this phase of upgrades to less than $8,000, which, if you know camera equipment, is a real win. Would you take a moment to consider, above and beyond your regular giving, what kind of contribution you can make to making our house, including our digital house, a home? However big or small that gift is, we know that God will honor it. He already has. We've already been able to reach so many people who couldn't come into a church otherwise, and we're looking forward to reaching many, many more. You can go right now to capitallife.org slash giving and give selecting the category home. And we'll make sure every bit of that goes towards this project. You can also give using our app. Just make sure to tag your giving with the category home so we can make sure that what you're giving goes to the right place. And again, thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving during these interesting times. Just like Pastor Bill shared, I love that we're able to, as a community, come together to strategically leverage our resources to see the kingdom of God expand online. Let me pray for you as you get ready to give. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have as a church to come together and to spread the gospel even in our giving. So as we prepare as a church to worship by giving, I pray that every person that responds in an act of obedience and in an act of worship right now would find themselves blessed beyond measure as they give, blessed to be a blessing. And that as we invest into these new tools and resources, we pray that it would be a method that expands the kingdom far beyond anything we could have asked or imagined. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. Today, I'm going to speak about one of the most powerful tools that we have at our disposal that God has given us in order to have a victorious life and really to do His will and to advance His kingdom. Uh, I'm speaking on the subject of prayer, and I'm telling you, we can't talk enough about prayer. But beyond talking, the idea of having a powerful prayer as uh, a life as a lifestyle, that we're able to pray prayers that we are confident that God is hearing. And that idea ought to be uh, all-consuming to us. That ought to be something that motivates us, launches us forward in the morning. And so as I speak on prayer, I think of how Billy Graham once said, heaven is full of answers to prayers for which no one bothers to ask. And I don't want that to be true of me, and I don't want it to be true of you, that we don't bother to ask, but there are answers that God has for us if we would ask. I heard another minister once say that he believes that, there, that we will get to heaven and that we will see that there were unclaimed miracles that were there for us if we had only claimed them while we walked this earth. Again, I don't want that to be the case. And so today I'm going to talk about how you can have a powerful prayer life and how you can have breakthrough and how you can pray with precision. And maybe today you, you, you say, you know, I've been praying for something, but I've not seen the breakthrough. I've been praying and I've been wondering if God hears my prayers. Today's message is for you. So let's look at the book of Matthew, <clears throat> starting in the uh, seventh chapter and the seventh and eighth verses. Now, these are written in red. That means if you have a Bible where the red writing is there, it means they're words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Now, those may sound like simple words, but the reality is, is that God is giving you an insight right there into how to have a powerful prayer life that yields results. 
in Matthew 6, which is the chapter prior to the seventh chapter that we just read from, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And now Jesus returns to prayer. This is in the Sermon on the Mount, returns to prayer. And we see this in chapter seven. It's the only subject that Jesus addresses twice in the Sermon on the Mount. So the idea that we see in this is that Jesus is getting it across to us that prayer is absolutely critical. And I once heard someone say, why would we navigate life with a squirt gun when God has given us an Uzi? And prayer is that Uzi. Prayer is that powerful, high precision tool by which we can see the kingdom of God activity coming forth in our individual lives, in our community, our nation, and our world. So in Matthew 7, 7 through 8, again, we see those words, ask, and it shall be given to you. Now that word ask is a powerful word. I think if we were to utilize that word ask, not on our own uh, behalf, but on behalf of the kingdom of God, I think we would advance the kingdom uh, at a more rapid rate than what we would see, uh, are now seeing. The first thing I wanna to talk to you about in regard to asking is that you should, and if you're taking notes, write this down, you should ask someone who is capable of giving you what you're asking for. The reality is we tend to talk with people who don't have the answer. Now it's good to have a listening ear. It's good to have somebody who's willing to just empathize, say I'm sorry or I understand. All of that is good. But the reality is the power of prayer is that we're asking the very one who is fully capable by all of his resources to have the answers for us that we're asking about, the subject matter that we're asking. Now, blind, blind Bartimaeus is an example that we see in scripture of one who's on the side of the road. He begs for a living. That's how he's able to feed himself. And the world is looking down on him. In that day and age, they would have believed that he had done something wrong. And this is the judgment of God, that here he is blind. When someone says that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by and thank God for the one who said it, because Bartimaeus otherwise would not have known it. We all ought to be big mouths about the fact that Jesus is present. And when someone says that, that Jesus is passing by, Bartima Bartimaeus cries out to him. Now, I shared that story a few weeks back in a message, and it's one of my favorite uh, stories in the New Testament. Bartimaeus asked Jesus for something. Do you know what it was? When Jesus says, what is it that you want? Do you remember what he asked for? You're right. He asked for his sight. He asked that he might be able to see. Now, the reality is he could have responded in so many different ways. He could have said, I desire food. I'm hungry. I desire money. I need to buy clothes. I need to buy uh, the things that allow me to live another day. He could have uh, shared any of these things, but he didn't. He shared that he desired to have his sight. So he was recognizing that the one before him wasn't like anybody else who would ask, what is it that you want? Because I'm sure his response to anybody else passing by would have been those things. He's asking for sight because he realizes that the one that is standing before him has the power to restore sight to him in a way that he would believe no one else could because only the power of God, God himself could do that. So we w must not see any individual, any person as being our source outside of God. God is your source. Will you say it there right where you are? Don't be shy. Say, God is my source. God is my source. Now, nobody else is. And the reason why it's important for you to know that is that if you believe that your boss is your source, that the job that you're working at is your source, that that income that you're making there is your source, you're going to live in a way by which you're going to be fearful 
should for any reason you not have that job. If for any reason you get out of good standing with your boss. And the reality is, is that God supersedes your boss. God supersedes the economy that we live in, whether it's high, whether it's low, booming, or, uh, or bearish, whatever it may be, God supersedes all of this. So if we look to a human being to be our source, we're inevitably going to be let down. But that's why we say and we believe, and the Bible says it, that God is our source. Now, the Bible says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we see God not as an ogre in the sky waiting to strike us down, but we see God as a good God, that God is a rewarder and that he has plans, as the Bible says, to prosper you. Do you know what prosperity is? Prosperity is the ability to have uh, an abundant life in God. Now, we tend to think of that in terms of money, 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 money. And the reality is, is that God prospers us in soul. God prospers us in life in all ways. But he puts it in proper perspective. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There's where we ought to have our focus. There's where we ought to have our energies and our prayers. And all of these other things, doom, 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 right down the line, will come into order if we seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. So the first thing that I challenge you to do is ask someone who is capable of giving you what you want. The second thing in regard to asking is that, and write this down, you need to ask specifically. Be specific. Tell God exactly what your need is, exactly what it is that you're be, uh, bringing before him and requesting him to move on. And this targets your faith. And so when our faith is targeted, we're not praying just general, oh, bless me, Lord, prayers. We're praying prayers specifically for nations. We're praying prayers specifically for a specific leader or someone in our family that we care about that doesn't know God or that's going through a difficult time and needs healing. And so God is uh, the one that is listening and he is very specific in how he responds. So why don't we ask specifically? Remember Bartimaeus, when he was asked, what is it that you want? He didn't say, oh, just a general blessing, Lord. He said, I want to see. I want to see. He was very specific in what he needed. So what was Jesus doing? He was drawing forth Bartimaeus's faith. He was drawing forth his faith because Jesus is God. He could see that Bartimaeus was blind. He, he's not dumb. He could see that. But he wanted Bartimaeus to say, I'm asking you, God. I'm asking you to interact with me and my faith is on full throttle now that you are the God that is rewarder, is the rewarder. And I desire to see. So he was very specific. The third thing is that when you ask, you should ask believing. Now that's a critical thing right there because the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Beyond declaring your targeted need, what you're doing when you uh, speak forth in faith to God and you tell him what it is that you need, you are, yes, targeting your need, but you're also pronouncing God's character, that God is faithful, that God is a rewarder, that God cares, that he's going to come through for you, that your God is powerful, that your God is awesome, that your God is a God in the now, that your God is a healer, that your God is a deliverer, that God is well able to save all the way to the uttermost parts of the earth. Number four, the Bible calls us to ask, but the Bible also calls us to seek and to knock. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask and it shall be given to you. Uh, and then we see also these words seek and knock. Well, these are verbs. 
These are action words. That means we're to be very intentional. And I love the people in our church right now talking about the intentionality of Jesus. Well, Jesus calls us also to be intentional and to be resolute, to be proactive. The Bible doesn't say talk and keep on talking. The Bible doesn't say complain. And by the way, keep on complaining. That's what many of us tend to do. But the Bible doesn't say those things. We must invest our energy where we get maximum results for our investment. We won't get that if we're simply talking. We won't get that if we're simply complaining. But if we instead are proactive to ask, to seek, and to knock, we'll find that God honors our intentionality, <clears throat> our being proactive. Now, here are some lessons that we learn. Number one, that we uh, ask the one who has the answer. We've talked about that. But we also learn that we ask until, in other words, we ask and we keep on asking until we get the answer. Now, I'm going to say this until we get his answer. Because a lot of times we ask God for something only to go with our own answer as if God didn't hear us or as if God's not going to move. But we need to ask and keep on asking until we receive his, meaning God's, answer for us. Until we know that he is speaking to us. God has a vantage point we do not have. Did you hear me? God has a vantage point that you do not have. God also has timing that is all his own. And God has ways that are mysterious. And I love that fact that they are mysterious to us. But he is at work behind the scenes. His ways supersede our ways. So the statement is, ask seek and knock. Now, in the scriptures, we find this verse that we just read, these two verses uh, that we have been reading, we find them sandwiched in between two things in the Word of God. One is a lesson on uh, proper judgment. So we're getting this in context now that we're to ask, to seek, and the knock, and to knock knowing that we've just learned about what is proper judgment. And then the other thing that sandwiches all this on the other side is that we see a focus on making the most important decision of all, which is salvation, which is what are we doing, going to do with this one named Jesus? What are we going to do in regard to the fact that we once did not exist, now we do, we will not cease existing. The question is, where will we go when we draw our last breath on this earth? But there are questions of eternity. So uh, this question of salvation and how we'll respond is the other part of this sandwich I'm talking about. Proper judgment and making the most important decision of all. In James 4, 2 through 3, uh, the second through the third verse, the Bible shows that there is an alignment between righteous living and right motives. So we can misunderstand this ask, seek, knock. We can ask for what we want. We can seek materialism. We can bang on doors until we get our way and until we feel that we somehow are prosperous in the world's ways but we're not thinking God stuff. And the reality is that in James 4, we see that there is an alignment between right living and right motives that result in attaining God's answer. So here's the balance that's too often lost in the midst of people wanting simply something for their flesh or out of greed. God is not a genie in a bottle. We don't rub the bottle and all of a sudden God pops out and we say, I want to marry that person. I want that house and I want to drive that. That's not what we're looking at. What we're looking at is aligning our hearts to what's on God's heart. So what we're asking is already in alignment with God's heart. 
What we're seeking is already there in alignment with what God is seeking to advance. And what we're knocking on the door of is something God has already stated he has for us. And there are promises all through the word of God for you. So we are seeking a result that is aligned to God's heart and tied to kingdom purpose. This is why Jesus prays to the Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus says, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus is modeling us uh, for us something that is very, very important, that we recognize it isn't about us. It's about God's kingdom going forth. It's about us seeing God and calling forth God's purposes on this earth. Now, those words, ask, seek, and knock, are actually given in a progression. And I want you to see that. Ask, seek, and knock. Do you notice that they become more aggressive? Do you notice that with each word, you see more of a sense of being deliberate and acting in a deliberate way? I mean, to ask is one thing. To seek is another. To knock is a wholly another thing. I remember When I first graduated from university and I was living with two roommates in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and one night we could hear a strange sound. It almost sounded like a loud bird at first. And my roommates and I went outside of our apartment and we noticed that there was a lady's voice crying out, CR, CR, CR. We thought, what is CR? And then we realized that she was calling out the initials C and R. She was looking for somebody. Now, in time, we would find out the one she was looking for was her small child who had been playing. So she now is frantic, recognizing that CR is not by her side. CR is not in her apartment. At first, what we heard was simply CR, CR. But then it went to CR, CR, and we could hear it being all the more urgent what she was calling out until finally we could hear there was laughing and crying as she found little CR. Now, I want you to know her progression went from an asking stage to a louder seeking stage to where she was knocking on doors and if people would open the door, she would run in and look around. She had an absolute urgency to her, recognizing she must have the answer that she is seeking. To ask is verbal. To seek is acting. To knock is pursuing entry. Now, in the Greek, the Bible ask actually uses wording that means that we're to ask and keep on asking. We're to seek and keep on seeking. We're to knock and we're to keep on knocking. And that is a vigilance that we see in that. Now, why would Jesus tell us to ask unless God has the answer that you're seeking right now? And let's bring this right to where you're at. What is it that you need to have from God or know from God? Do you know that he is the one who has all resources? Do you know that he desires to answer you and he desires to interact with you and he desires to give you the breakthrough? So the first thing is, again, why would Jesus tell us to ask unless God answers? Number two, why would Jesus tell us to seek unless God's provision is capable of being found? You may feel like what you're facing is an impossibility. You don't see a way through. But God tells you, Jesus is telling you, who is God himself, to seek, proactively seek. Well, he wouldn't do that unless breakthrough is possible. So a miracle is waiting for you. Don't let it be unclaimed. There are answers in heaven for which people don't bother to ask. The questions of God. And so... Why would Jesus call upon us to seek God's provision unless it could be found? Number three, why would Jesus ask us to knock 
unless the door that is now shut is capable of opening. And so I want you to see things in a this is possible frame of mind. I want you to see that with God, all things, how many things? All, th I didn't hear you. All things are possible with God when you believe. So I want to conclude my message today by saying that God has called us to be watchmen and watch women on the wall. That's really significant right now because we're in, a, in the midst of a world pandemic. We are in the midst of something we've never experienced before. It's very significant in the United States of America because we are in the midst of an election and a very brutal one and one where nobody can really tell you the outcome of where this is going. And it's, we're at a crossroads in America and the nation can go one way or the other. What we need to be pursuing in all of this is we need to pursue God's righteousness. We need to pray forth that God's righteousness will go forth in our nation, that God's will will be done, that God's priorities will be established. It goes beyond anything that we see with politics, and it goes towards the advancement of the kingdom. So we're, we are to pray when we ask, seek, and knock. Remember, this is a message on prayer how to have a powerful prayer life, how to pray with precision, how to have the breakthrough, how to see things accomplished for the kingdom all around the globe because you prayed. We are to pray for our families and friends, for our church and for our community. We're to pray for our nation and for our world. I encourage you to come at 5 p.m. Get there a little early if you can, so you can get a good spot. We're going to be praying together. There's something powerful about corporate prayer. We'll have a time of worship, and I encourage you to come. Our world needs healing, and our nation needs direction, and needs to have godliness be pervasive. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, to pray with me for just a moment. Uh, there are needs right now that you have uh, in your family, then in your own heart, in your own mind, in your career. There are needs that are there that speak to eternity where you're concerned. There are needs in our community. There are needs in our nation and in our world. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your wisdom. God, we seek you. As we're asking, we seek your healing, we seek your guidance, we seek your provision. God, we knock. We knock on the door of your heart until the world is healed of this pandemic, until our nation follows your ways, until our own hearts are pleasing to you. And Heavenly Father, for each person that is here right now, I pray that as they place their hand on their heart, that they'll do so as a commitment to you to receive you as Savior and Lord right now. And Father, we pray that you will restore what has been taken away from us, what has been lost. God, we pray for healing of hearts in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks so much for joining us today. For those of you that saw Pastor Bill's message last week, phenomenal message where he encouraged us to use social media to advance the kingdom. So just wanted to remind you of that. We really want to build it into our culture where we are all interacting on Capital Life social media pages uh, that can be liking, it can be sharing on your own page. You never know who will see it and decide to give church a try or be interested in finding out more about God. Uh, comment on our post as well as Pastor Jeff created a wonderful tool for us. It's actually capitallife.org slash share and all the tools that you would want or places to review Capital Life are all in one location for you. So I encourage you to even go check that out right now and write a review. Uh, you never know how God will use that. 
I also wanted to remind you that groups are now live. You can check those out. We have 10 wonderful groups that we're offering this fall semester. Uh, for those of you that are coming to the outdoor worship night, you can meet our group leaders in person and sign up there, but you can also find out all the information at capitallife.org slash groups, and those start this week. And then finally, wanted to invite you to CLC Connect, which is our opportunity to connect in a Zoom room, share prayer requests, talk about the message today, as well as if you're new, we'd love to meet you and say hello, find out all about what's going on at Capital Life during this season. So have a wonderful week.